Welcome to the Alien Form University Trade Talk conversation for Wednesday, September 4th. Feel like you heard that just a moment ago? That's because you did. This is KD. I am the Chief Education Officer here at Alien Form. A pleasure to be with you as always, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Living the dream, planning the markets and trade the markets. And I do hope that you've had a really great start to September. Remember, we don't have time for negativity. We only have embrace positivity because don't be a hater unless you know the game that you're playing and our game is to make financial freedom occur now thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here and remember i'm here for you i'm in the community four days a week we do amas every two weeks i'm the closest thing you'll get to an ama in between every two weeks so i take questions i provide answers and insights and again, I want you to succeed. Your success guarantees our success. Everyone in the room is committed to financial freedom. Everyone in the room is committed to learning and earning. And this is not just a spiel. This is the truth. We must get our heads wrapped around realizing success is a formula. And it can be replicated in everything that you do. And then lend a lot of positive into your life, which I already hope has a lot of positive into it. Imagine that much positive, you're bursting the scene with positives. But performance matters. So we need to make the dream work, getting the team to work, and then drawing in profits and making good trades. So let's get to work this evening. And I will um, have to change some of my screens. I've just finished up my equities day. So I'll change those over as we get into it. Um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano up at the top. Double red, joined by Polkadot, Chainlink, and Bitcoin Cash. Last few weeks have not been very strong for the bulls. Ripple mixed and Litecoin mixed, but Litecoin rallied a little bit earlier, though it's only up like 1% or something today now. Let's go to the heat map and see where we are within the last... 24 hours. We're oh. a little bare, aren't we? There's a little bit of red there. Ethereum, not even a quarter. Anything below 0.2 I consider to be flat. So Bitcoin is flat. BNB is down. Ripple's down one and a half. Avalanche was up, Shib's up a little bit, Dodge is flat, Tron's down, Soul is up over 2.5%, and we had Immutable up randomly. You know, some meme coins out there like Dog with Hat, 5%. I've never made a trade on Helium, so I remember putting Helium into Balloon and talking in a funny voice, but that's been about my exposure to Helium. Um... And that's funny right there. Uniswap up 3.5%. And so really for the most part, folks, ebb and flow. The Yesterday was a really hard day. And today in the equities markets, the crypto um, miners were getting their rear ends handed to them. And you know what? Again, it's evolution. It's solution. We, we see what's happening in the now but we have to realize what happens in the then. And that's part, what really is important about planning your trades, understanding where the news is coming in, where the markets are evolving to, and then letting that embrace you with a layer of trust into what happens next. When you start a business, you're excited. When I started my business, I envision millions of customers. You have to go out and get those customers. You have to go through and follow your plan to make the right decisions to build up your business. And for our entrepreneurs out there, nothing but hats off to you because you know how important it is to build a solid foundation. 
Trading is the exact same thing. It is the exact same thing. Building the right roadmap, following the acumen of your business model, making decisions, because you're the, you're the CEO of your trading plan. You make the decisions. You don't rely on a board. Your board in decision-making is your tools, your instruments that inform you. So at the, end of, at the end of the day, you're the one with the, the heavy hand. Let's go take a look at some charts, integrate a little bit of that, and I'm going to change up a few things as I've been doing equities into the close. And just so you know, here's what I do. I'll show you what ARC B looked like at the end of the day. And this is a Bitcoin exchange traded fund. I'm actually going to go to the daily here and share a couple of these new ETFs with you. Now, of course, you notice they're not low to the left and high to the right. Anytime you walk up on a chart and it's low to the left, high to the right, you know that's a bullish chart. If you don't know, that's a bullish chart. If it's high to the left, meaning that your highs are over here, and then it's low to the right, meaning the price is over here, then you're in a bearish environment. Plain and simple. Now, this is an ETF from Kathy Woods Fund. Um, Kathy Woods is a, a fund manager. And I remember just a quick, I'll, I'll make this a quick story. When I first started working in Fidelity, I worked for a mutual fund as a market maker on the fund. Basically, I was a, assigned by my fund manager to go make sure that the fund had the holdings to reflect the benchmark. So in other words, if we're tracking this index like the Phalanx Semiconductor Implex or Semiconductor Exchange, and my ETF was on that, my, or, sorry, my mutual fund was on that, then my job was to have two or three of those stocks that were in the holdings and make sure we balanced that with the flow of it every day. Learned a lot, learned a lot about order execution in market mechanics, which I share with you to this day. I mean, that type of wisdom is accrued through experience. And so um, Aaron, uh, the fund manager, one of the first female fund managers at Fidelity, by the way, she was just a rock star. I mean, she, had, she, she was a Jedi. I will tell you that. She was strong with the ways of the force. And she picked so many great growth stocks that that, mutual fund still one of the top funds at fidelity go look it up if you don't take my word for it Aaron hadn't been there since uh you know i was back there in late 90s not to date myself too much late 90s and uh, 2000 before i became my own brokerage manager and ran my own team so i left that team and formed my own team arc b and then here is BTFX. Anybody have an account with Fidelity Investments here in the United States? But look, the charts are going down, and people are thinking, hey, this is a bad investment. Folks, you don't want to buy at the top. If you're an investor, you want to sell at the top. What's happening right now, as we've spoken about the last several weeks, is the fact that the markets are going through an accrual. Institutions are launching more exchange-traded funds. And as they're doing that, what do they need to do to accomplish that goal? Well, they need to make sure that the funds that they're launching are duly holding the instruments that are the goals of the fund in the first place. So in other words, you know, Valkyrie Bitcoin futures here. Leveraged. This is a weighted ETF. Long. Fidelity's is actually FBTC, Foxtrot, Bravo, Tango, Charlie. And I mean, you know, you think the chart's just going to go to the moon when institutions get involved. No, institutions will drive it consistently towards the ceiling. Oh my goodness, Mary Jane, hello, hope you're doing great. Mary Jane is in the room. I'm so grateful Hi. to have a 
Rivera here with us. Hello, hello. I'm here. I just want to say hello to you. Thanks for taking the time to tune in. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so great to have you here. Hope you had a great Labor Day. We're yes, talking. I, well, I went to work, but I did. Hope you guys did. Oh, yes, ma'am. You know, work's something that you have to do. I know you've been busy interviewing people, so thank you for keeping people employed. That's also very great. So uh, let's take a look at an Ethereum exchange rate of return. I'm going to give you Echo Echo Tango Hotel, and then we're going to go right to charts on ETH. Now look at this. Do you see the way the prices work here? Look at Ethereum from August 24th to August 5th. But I want you to look at one thing here. You see this little D? This exchange traded fund pays dividends. Now, does everyone understand what a dividend payment is? If you own a security, they have a schedule to provide their investors with a cash reward for helping them maintain a balance and base. Now, this is a $49 ETF right now, which actually pays a dollar. Oh my God, these are some great dividends. Look at that. At, and check, and again, this is a crypto conversation, okay? We're on crypto, but we're within and beyond. What you want to see in evolution is embracement within the larger institutions. Now, they're going to make money off of it, but they're going to stabilize the marketplace. They're going to keep those bad actors like Cliff in jail. He couldn't pull this on Fidelity. Fidelity would bury him under Guantanamo. Does that make sense? So bad actors don't perform well against people like Warren Buffett. All of BZ's money does not compare to Berkshire Hathaway in the way. As a matter of fact, the entire crypto market is smaller than Berkshire Hathaway. Now, let that sink in for a minute. We're just riding the coattails of these institutions. I would put this out there to everyone as a very valued instrument if you have a Roth IRA, if you believe in the future of the blockchain, which we do, because there are not many instruments that pay out a dividend. You're right. Um, here's ETHU, Ethereum up. You'll notice that this one also pays a dividend. It's much smaller, however, due to the price. It's like fractions of pennies. So Echo Echo Tango Hotel is an investment, not as a trade, as an investment in an IRA because you're being paid dividends <clears throat> eventually what happens is you get above your cost basis to break even and this is pro shares Bitcoin paying out around this just paid a dollar twenty per share per share okay so that's a considerable dividend for something at $18 does that make sense I mean you're making six to seven percent and it pays monthly dividends you're making this income whether Ethereum or Bitcoin goes up or down now think about owning that over five years when we break through the bull market, you're accruing and receiving income. 
Anybody have any questions? Comments? I thought I heard somebody on mic. Yeah. Kevin, can you hear me? Yeah, got you. How are you doing, Bill? I'm doing fine. Uh, I've got another one for you. I think it's C O N Y. It's like yeah, 129%. Uh, con L? Is that Con L? Uh, no, C O N Y. Okay. Okay, so there's a coin option income strategy plan. That pays a pretty healthy dividend, too. I mean, these are cash cows, folks. You don't care whether the market goes up or down. You just hold those shares, and they pay you to hold them. And these are not small dividends. At this price level, a dividend of a dollar per share month on month you hold this for a year. You hold this for a year, it's paying you a dollar a month. The shares are at 13 bucks. After a year, we're receiving a dollar or more on dividend. What's your cost basis? Practically nothing. It becomes free money. Well, it's not free money because you invest in this but what we call this or what we call these are dividend champions how many of you would love to own ethereum long time if ethereum gave you a distribution every month with still the opportunity for the price to go up to lend the capital appreciation phase so, I mean, really, this is a short duration thing because these are coming out, but the institutions are driving this. And because they're driving that, there are going to be a lot more opportunities. I, I said this when we first broke bread, when I was introduced to the group um, and I explained the marriage that I envisioned occurring between crypto and the equities markets. So much so that some of my good acquaintances and friends over the years I've brought onto our team. Um, of course, Nick and Tad, because man, we got all this, we got this covered. We know what's going to happen. And if you go back to December, most everything that we put in plot and courses occurred. I know, you know, life is a journey. Everybody has things going on every day, right? But look what we've achieved in such a short period of time in integrating a marketplace that's going to go from trillions to greater in the next five to ten years. This market will be such a huge market cap space. The instruments we just spoke about are just the beginning as we go through and we take Bitcoin down to a four. Mostly bears here. I'm going to bounce today, a little cover rally. But for the bulls in the room, kind of sitting on your hands, you might could do some scalping. But look how quickly these moves occur up and down. I saw this at noon. I watched and I was laughing at it because I wasn't able to get an order in fast enough. And then just, no, you don't do things like that. If you can't catch this and you come in late, you're going to lose. Late loses. And then it goes back to this range that's been crummy in for the last past few sessions. Now, I feel like, you know, this is consolidation. There's the rectangle that we broke. So I'm going to remove the rectangle. We were in a rectangle on Sunday. We broke it today. Today was a lower low, but look where this is at. I could draw a trend line there, but there's no need to support. It's going to come down here. It bounced within the trend lines we already drew up prior. Remember, if you don't like what you see, cash is a position. Sleep easy at night if you don't like the market structure. However, we're just playing pivot point ping pong, which means that we're range bound. Now, in the context 
of going through, you see me only using simple trend lines here, um, which I do. I can make these more complicated, but I'm trying to teach you something. So once you learn enough, then complicated is okay. But the marriage between the markets is a fat, it's not a fast relationship. It's something that's growing as trees grow roots deeper, the tree grows larger. And that's really what we're doing, though, you know, shorter term investors just take advantage of volatility within waves. Shorter term traders rather take a volatility in the waves. But if the ranges are tight, then there's nothing to do, period. We need to get out of a funk. Today was such a tight trading range that I was just frustrated for a while and then just let it go. Some days there's just not a trade there. And another thing to grasp psychologically is forcing a trade. You know, it's your lunch break or whatever. It's like, I've only got so much time. I got to get into a trade here. I saw this this morning. You know, if you can't have enough time to logically walk around and see what the trade's at, then um, just better to move off and move on. I mean, a comment to that is to better, it's better to not be in the trade and wish that you were than to be in the trade and wish that you weren't. I mean, that holds so much common knowledge to everything that we do as human beings. Now, this is interesting on Solana because we're tagging some support. You see these wicks? Now, if you're not familiar with the way candlesticks work, here's a little candle one-on-one, -on -one, 101 rather. The highest high for the day. So I'm on a daily chart and the lowest low for the day. Mark the center wick. The center wick is the line that goes through the Japanese candlestick. The center wick high is at the top. The center wick low is at the bottom. Now, candlesticks, like anything you're using, open, high, low, close, etc. On a bullish candlestick, the body at the bottom marks the opening price, whereas the body at the top of the candle marks the closing price. When we are green for the day, this is the close, at least where we're at right now, because we're still trading. Once the daily updates, the next bar builds out, starts from the close, and builds up or down. Here's a center wick on yesterday's candle, which opened at this price level. Got up here, came down there and closed near the low. We opened on that price and have not broken out that price. So the last few days on Seoul, nothing to write home about. However, the purpose for me explaining wicks and candlesticks was to make sure everyone clearly understands that wicks are like dipping your toe in the water when it's going down or trying to put your finger through the ceiling when it's going up. The more often that you see those type of candle patterns built can also help you identify a potentially significant price level. And why are these price levels called significant? This is areas where decisions are made, support and resistance, turnarounds, U-turns. If it holds, it holds. You don't take a lot of risk until the decision goes the other way. If it breaks this trend line, your next level of support is really centered here. That's almost 19 points. That's reading the tea leaves. That's about a, a 10 to 12% trade. And there's plenty of floor for it to go to. But even look why we're here right now. Historically, 
as these levels have been created. I love charts like this. Solana looks pretty terrific here, though it's uh, today's about a 5% rally. It's just a bounce because we're selling. Now, why is it called a bounce? Because price has been coming down like a ball dropping with gravity. Support is the floor. So when you hit support, the ball bounces. Now, of course, if you look to the left, we're really tight in these ranges and the moving averages are pointing down. No reason to really get super long here. There's the center wick low from the day. We caught a fractal and the fractal bought up to about a $3 level. Look to the left of where we're at now. You see those lines converging. This helps us learn to be disciplined in identifying entries as well as exits. I mean, that's the bread and butter of trading is getting in and getting out. But what's the, the thing in between there that drives success is goals, target setting, target trading. We're all target traders. We all don't get into a trade just to be in a trade. I don't get in my car and get on the road just thinking, where am I going? I have a roadmap to get onto the road. I have a roadmap to get to my destination. That is our mindset. Soul is going to be one that comes out with a new exchange traded fund as well. So, you know, I speak a lot to the, the evolution of the space. But, you know, five, ten years from now, you'll look back at this and say, wow, I was really and have been part of something so incredibly exciting and profitable. I mean, the dividend payments we spoke to with the ETFs, that's what the equities markets bring to the place. The trend for those ETFs is developed off this instrument right here. Trends over time for the real blue chips go low to the left, high to the right. Pull up in Apple, go 30 years on Apple. Bitcoin's not 30 years in, but every market goes through ups and downs. So the important knowledge to gain through pattern trading, through pattern recognition, is it really doesn't matter what instrument you're trading. The outcome's going to be the same. I mean, you know, I don't mean lose, lose, lose. I'm talking about over time, big picture. So let's go down, taking some of the smaller coins right now. This is Adam. High to the left, low to the right. Bearish. Shib, high to the left, low to the right. Bearish. Not going to go smaller on those today. Polka dot, high to the left, low to the right. But didn't break a lower low, still bearish. I could do the same research on support and resistance with candle wicks up or down on every one of these instruments. It would be time consuming. You know, I'm not going to do that for this afternoon, only to illustrate the point that charts are charts. The reason ETFs look different than cryptos is because opens and closes of the stock market where cryptos are 24-7. You know, the only market that does not truly sleep. Part of that, that was the futures market and the Forex market. So exchange traded funds are always going to gap. A gap is a change in price from the previous close to the day open. Now gaps either get filled, which means that we, we gap down, we fill that gap, or gaps get faded which means we're up and then we sell off. You don't have that in crypto. In crypto, you have completely awake pricing. So even though you're asleep, 
there's somebody else awake in the market through the variety of sessions that are going on. And I speak to that because we don't we don't all have the same sleep schedule. So your sessions right now, this Mr. T session, you know, so the Sydney markets are open, 7.30 a.m. their local time. T's probably getting a couple of quick uh, or visit to the gym in, having some breakfast. And then Tokyo markets open. So these markets overlap. As markets overlap, more news comes out. More economies are churning. So within crypto, within every marketplace, you have news. You have news that comes out. This is called fundamental. Our foundation points come from a technical understanding. So we're looking at chart patterns, support resistance, Fibonacci, GAN, Elliott Wave. This is all built into the trade pro, which is a technical tool. Fundamentals or like the weather. You can go outside, doesn't look like it's going to rain, and it rains. Rains in the forecast, it snows. You never know because we don't have the answers as retail traders to the uh, fundamental announcement building out. But overnight, as local news events come out within the region, it affects the area. The Sydney market is Australia and New Zealand in the Asian rim. Of course, then China, Tokyo, all the Asian nations start to open up there. There's the most volatility in every market when they overlap. So if you're watching, this is Eastern, if you're watching 2 a.m. Eastern when markets overlap, is one market's closing, that's when you have volatility. So when markets overlap at open, and it close because you have people that are getting out. So then as Tokyo is open into the UK, Eurozone, Switzerland, and the Asian markets also encompass the Russian economies. So then London at this point, Tokyo closes. The volatility at the open could affect that local time in Asian session, whether this market's moving up or down. And then Asian session closes. We move into a dull period where news is coming out during the UK Eurozone, impacting price up or down. Then it walks into the overlap between the New York session, the North American trading session. Volatility happens at 8 a.m. or doesn't, depending on if there's a lot of economic news or rate statements going on. And then always, I always explain to my students, watch 1045 to noon, because this is the volatility that occurs into the close of the UK markets. In other words, the last hour of any market session can be volatile either with or against the direction of the trend. Now, how does that equate into a crypto chart? Look at the chart. Ask the question. Look at the times. Monitor the times. There's going to be news events to come out. See, and look at example, even the Coinbase 20 index. See, I mean, that's giving you a blue chip list to create your own basket. Why would I want to trade things that were not at the top of their industry? Here's Avalanche. We've been actively managing Avalanche on day trades within the trade team. Dodge, Cardano. Every one of these has set lower lows today, folks. Dog whiff. 
Dog with Fat looks like it's based a little bit here. This has developed a fractal low right there. And this is the buy candle on a fractal. There's the fractal. There's the buy candle on the fractal. Again, we're looking kind of toppy below $1.65. I'd be careful this week is not sit, look at this. Okay, slower down. These are called dragonfly dojis. Dragonfly dojis, they look like a cross. So it's something that I'm very familiar with. And what these represent is that this is the opening price. We're very close to the opening price on both of these candlesticks on the two hour time frame, which means Here's a close, here's an open. We went up, we went down, but we closed the open. So what is the direction? The direction is neutral. But dojis represent consolidating. So eventually, here's a couple of dojis. The price makes up its mind. Here's a doji, here's a doji, here's a doji. That's a hammer. There's a gravestone doji, which is the opposite of the dragonfly doji. Therefore, it's the same thing upside down. But this is saying, hey, you know what? The, the buyers are exhausted here. But the sellers didn't have enough to drive it down. Eventually, the price goes up. And then you get to these U-turns with the fractals. There's a fractal down, there's a fractal up, there's a fractal down that lost, or it's not losing yet because it came right back here. It's best to use consolidation to the direction of the trend. That's really the easiest thing to do. I just pull up dog with hat and broke it down. It could easily be anything, period. Here's Jasmine. Just randomundo. Now, it did break a lower low. The price range is down from late August. August was just a really stinking end to that month. Yeah, the there's a doji that's starting to come to give you. There's another dragonfly doji. Price action is drying up. It is up 4%, but that's because you had that big move at 10 this morning when the market swang, swang the other way and changed direction. But since then, it's doing nothing but to inspire you to buy this. This was a very flat session equities, which by and large is something that we want to navigate carefully in any marketplace because we're not getting the, the follow through that we really want to see. And the follow through is what takes you to targets. So everything else just wastes time. Eventually, we go sideways for too long. It's going to take your stop out. And that's just a sad fact. But that's what it is. And this is Pepe, which does not look non too well today. Apparently on the price action. Let's put some scans in on the probe. And we have any questions about some of the analysis I put out there. I know it's kind of high end, but um, speak the language, learn the language, visualize the price levels. We are visual learners. We need that reinforcement to help us gain confidence in making decisions with money, putting a budget together and managing your budget. So let's apply a few trend arrows. And we're going to work the four hour down. We'll start with the day simply as a preview. However, the win rate is only 67% with some of the better filtering. This explains kind of what I was telling you a moment ago, that the trends are losing steam. I've been noticing a price contraction across most of these things for the last few days. When prices are tightening up, when ranges are expanding, our targets are bigger. Our stops are a little bit wider, right? 
if there's more track on the road, you tend to drive faster if there's no cars there. But when congestion shows up and the price starts to contract, then our goals that we set during a fast moving market may prove to be too large in a contracting market. So recognizing range expansion and range contraction is simply taking a look at the prior intervals and looking at the range. I mean, going, for example, to Pepe here and saying, all right, well, there is a range of open, high, low, close, range 464. There's a range of 480, range expanding. There's a range of 347, contraction. And here's a range of 71, contraction at support. Despite the fact this is sideways, um, contraction is not something that's really good for goal setting. Because again, like I said, we're overshooting our skis. Let's take a look at Binance. That's what you got to like. 6% uh, just on the scan type. This is not a basket play. If you recall, on, on Monday, I did go into the baskets in detail. We're just going to take a look at a few of these. If we have time, we'll do a couple of quick baskets. Oh, looks like Luna was moving all right. This is long at 33.94. Current pricing is above 34 cents. Okay, so let's find Luna. No, I am on Binance, so we'll look at it on Binance. Where is it? 34.05, so it is up. That got long. Now, of course, this is on our four-hour chart. So here's why. There's a fractal. There's the trigger. Good deal. Down a little bit for the week, but um, here's Rune, part of my basket. And Rune is looking like it's trying to get short, but we're at 365 right now. It is down 30, 40 cents almost a week. Now, again, I'm not trading on Binance, so that, you know, it's neither here nor there. Here is crypto.com. Holy Magoo, that's 39 and 2. No losses on the long, 35 on the short. It's great to have an idea generator that can provide you with such good focused decision. You know, the process of what I'm showing you and going through and looking at charts. Some people entirely do not want to learn how to do that. But when I first learned to drive a car, my father taught me to drive a car on a stick shift. And of course, I've ridden horses, had motorcycles. So I was familiar with the dirt bikes, excuse me. So I was familiar with the one down, four up and stuff like that. Um, but he was right. If you can drive a stick shift, you can drive any vehicle. If there's a zombie apocalypse, in theory, you should be able to hop behind the wheel of an 18 wheeler and take it to town. So the basics are very important, even if you're gonna use a tool that doesn't require you to interact with it at all. I would not want anyone to use automation that doesn't know how to interact with a trade on their own anyway. As a matter of fact, it's not for you if you can't use the tool correctly, you blow your hand off. And it's only because you want to succeed. We have to put our education in front of us 
to be able to fill out an application. You have to be able to write, read, and spell. In trading, that's chart analysis, technicals, fundamentals, tools, ultimately automation. But I would not use automation. I never use automation ever without knowing how to turn the autopilot off. We can trust AI as much as we want to, but we still have to be able to be able to call the shots for what we're doing. 4%, 8% still the nine flat trades. And this is where we see a lot of, you know, dollars. Adam was up with a short to 390. And it's still above $4. I don't care if the other ones that are here. So then we'll go to Kraken. Still kicking around, opening up a Kraken account. So in that sense, we're going to take a look at it. Now, there's a lot of fiat currencies on this exchange. It's one of the things I don't necessarily like. Because this much is more of a distraction to me, even though I can create my basket. I don't like having this many items on the menu. And the more I scroll through these, I realize I really don't like any of them. There are 111 flats, so let's go to 100 per page. Some Litecoin buys. We've been getting long some Litecoin. That makes sense. Yeah, but some of these are just not at familiar with me, and I feel like those are not as liquid as they need to be. We're on the four-hour time frame. Trend is short. This is Mech C. Front safe? Yes, it is. Loom. The Loom Network, the 4177. I trade this a few times, but I don't necessarily like it. Okay, we're going to go with the same settings into the two hour time frame. This will be the smallest time frame we're viewing this afternoon. We're looking at the mid swings, the four hour time frame, the two hour time frame. Not the extreme low, not the extreme high as far as time frames go, and not the extreme at all. It is going to receive ebb and flow. At this point, the two hour time frame and the four hour time frame really don't disagree so much about the direction of the trend with a bias short of 53%. The bulls are stepping in here. However, the bulls are not the winning side. The, the bulls are beginning. The bears have been established from the daily to the 240. The trend has been bearish. So if anything does not disagree with that trend, it's a very, it's a different opinion. Now, opinions like that change whenever the trend changes. That's why we listen to these things. So, Binance takes the same formula of uptrend, downtrend to 50%. Once again, as I explained a moment ago, the established trend is short. Where did these longs come from? Those trades closing. So as you exit a short trade, you do not turn around and enter a short trade. When you exit, when you exit a short trade, the next trade is long. The next trade is a buy trade or a flat trade. So now we're getting long, and those trades are not getting follow through. So the win rate stinks on ice. But at least you know what's going on. And staying confused, there's a buy and a sell. But I think some of the other exchanges are not going to be faring as poorly. Crypto.com at 75%. Again, the shorts are doing well because they're cycling out. Most of these 25 new trades, and there's only a handful. There are a few that are long. Lumen, Stellar, um, 
and that's a double red short sell. V chain with a good set of rules. But the longs need help, only at eight and ten. And then go to Coinbase. Once again, great win rates on the short side. Longs are losing steam. So this is what we call a short squeeze. Because the shorts are squeezing the longs. This happened because of profit taking and a potential change in direction. And these are still open because of the trend. So buy a 77% long. I'm glad to see it, to show an outcome like this because you learn more about the trend in multiple time frame analysis, which is comparing one time frame to another, but not going through seven different time frames to make one decision. You take a direction from one time frame, and then you find what you where your trade is within that time frame, whether it's a daily for direction, a four hour direction, then a, a 30, a 15 or a 10 for your signal. You know, you, you look at it from that perspective and comparing multiple time frames is very powerful in analysis. I mean, I, I, my, I think the most powerful view in the probe where you get the most information is from the all time frames view. The all time frames view is just terrific. Having the opinion of where the other time frames are looking to be long or short. This is a bird's eye view. You you see a lot from looking down from a tree, don't you? There's the story once again, the 80 longs trying to step in, the shorts winning. Some of these were down, but then again, anything that kind of gets there, like there's Zeus, I've traded Thor chain. So not long at 1909, but the 15 is short, the week, the one up here is short as well. That's the daily. So in, in the middle, we've had a bullish rally, but multiple time frame analysis really makes things super simple. I'm going to go ahead and do the quick basket of my non Bitcoin Ethereum Litecoin coins. And this is of course Pepe Dodge Ship near render Ondo and chain link on the four hour. Staying consistent with where we're at on the four hour bar. Looks like a happy bar must be a happy hour. Shib render Dodge all with buys on this list and they were actually gaining pretty well at that update the two hour time frame look what happened there whoopsie the shorts trapped the bears or the bulls the bears trapped the bulls and not a single one of those is making money now that is amazing because we don't see that too often within the probe. This, remember, this is only seven symbols, so it's not like it's something unnecessarily huge into today's markets. September started off pretty strange. Yesterday was very directional. Today was whipsaw. Whipsaw days. Don't chase trades. Don't force a trade. I'll let you know if I think you're forcing a trade. Dolan Trump. Okay, that's interesting. Our economic calendar. Always know where you're driving. So today, Thor chain with that hard fork on Rune. Baby Dodge is launching on Solana. Go, Baby Dodge. We're driving with traffic. Be safe. Be careful. Pancake swap tomorrow with a live stream on YouTube. Might be worth being a fly on the wall there. 
Friday is very light economic calendar. It is now time to do the news. Let's do the news. Now it's true. Um, converting mining science to AI data centers isn't seamless. They got to be very careful. Look at this, six reasons why Solana price could crash to 50 bucks. Well, um, let's see. Because people take profits or the institutions launch an ETF and then start going through an accrual. Otherwise, back off and jog on. Siemens, which is a, learning, a leading German industrial firm, launched a digital bond on the blockchain. We're at 330 million euros on Polygon. I'm sorry, are institutions involved in the crypto market? So all of our on the fence bears out there, wake up. Opportunity comes knocking. You gotta be able to answer the door. Solana altcoins. We saw baby Dodge going out there a moment ago. Ton's been doing well. Kamala Harris is accepting crypto donations. She would take a donation from people that were holding cardboard signs. So, I mean, come on. Ooh, Nigerian court to decide Binance execs bail application. That's going to hurt you there. Taker and Gambarian. Anyway, I don't see anything, again, negative in the news. Look what's happened since we sat down. Things have flattened out. As I mentioned before, flat is not directional. Soul's actually up a little bit more, and the coins have gained some. These were in the red when we sat down and broke red, but now they're tending toward the green. That's a great scene from what I say. Give it a little bit of time, see if we get some uh, momentum going in the next few hours. I would not do too much right now, though, since we're flattened out mostly. Hope everyone has a terrific winning Wednesday. Thank you for your time. Your time is very valuable. I want to know that you're learning to earn and things are coming in and making sense. Anything you'd like to take a look at, let me know. I'll be back on as usual at Friday. I'd like to thank Christy once again for taking time out of her busy day to put the production out, for streaming everything and learning as she goes along the way. I'd also like to thank Mary Jane for taking the time to hop in and be a board member in the room along with myself. This is KD, wishing you a great day. I'd also like to thank Bill and Serena, thank you. And I'd also like to give a shout out to the herd. Raj, you have a super day. I know it's been a, a heck of a weekend, but September is gonna be great, folks. Months start, months end. The end of this month is a new quarter. When the day, when the meet, when the day, when the week, when the month, when the quarter, and then ultimately you win year on year. So hopefully I've shared some ideas that Inspire to connect them with some things that are within your capacity to do. But at the same time, it's always onwards and upwards. So with Alien Form, this is KD. Thank you again for tuning in to Trade Talk. I'll catch up with you again on Friday. Be safe, be blessed, and I'll see you next time.